that what is not mentioned. Without that what, the whole sentence is incomplete. So this is where the discussion is. Today's discussion is that uh, this whole sentence is actually uh, a kalima. A word. So in Arabic, the language <coughs> is divided into two things. It's word and sentence. This is one way of dividing the language. Sentence is called kalam. So all the things of the language are classified into, from this perspective, into two classifications. Either if anything of the language is a word, or anything of the language is a kalam. Either it's a kalima or a kalam. Either it's a word which is incomplete in its own self unless it's, it's add, something else is added with it, or it's a sentence which is complete in itself. So here, Bismillah Rahman Rahim is a kalima, is a word. It's not a sentence. So when it's a word, it's not a sentence, then a kalima requires something else to be complete. So again, this is called harful jar, the ba that gives the Kasra at the end of the next word. So this is harful jar. Harful jar. And this rest of Bismillah Rahman Rahim is called Majru. The whole complete is called Majru. So the whole complete rest of the complete thing is in the state of jar. And Ba is affecting the whole rest of the thing. Not just the word ism only, the whole rest of the thing is called is Majru, is, is connected with that. So this is Ja and Majru. So Bismillah Rahman Rahim is a composition of a Ja and a Majru. There is, like I said in one of my previous classes, there is no way you can avoid Arabic grammar. Obviously, I'm not going to teach grammar here, but I'm definitely going to talk about what relates to our discussion. That much you have to understand to have a complete, uh, or somehow complete understanding of the, because Quran is in Arabic. So, Bismillah Rahman Rahim grammatically is a jar and majroor, which is a kalima. Which means a word, it's not a sentence. Jar and Majroor together. Jar is Ba. And Ismillah Rahman Rahim is Majroor. And this together is a word. And for a word to be, to make complete sense and come out of the incompleteness, it requires something. So through the name of Allah or with the name of Allah, for example, I begin with the name of Allah. So I begin completes the sentence. Where is I begin? That's not mentioned. Or what exactly I'm trying to do with the name of Allah. That mm, is not mentioned here. So this is where that thing makes Bismillah Rahman Rahim complete. Now here the discussion among various Mufassirin of Quran, huge discussion about this segment. And uh, there are some people who say that um, uh, <coughs> there are some people who say that Bismillah Rahman Rahim is uh, a, a kalam, is a word. There are some of us who have said that it is not a, it is not a word, it is a sentence. So there are some who say that. So when those of the Mufassirin who believe that Bismillah Rahman Rahim is a sentence, 
it's a complete kalam and complete sentence. This discussion of Jar and Majroor makes no sense for them because for them it's a complete sentence. So those people will, will not discuss in their books of tafsir, they will not talk about Jar and Majroor because for them it's a complete sentence. Because when you discuss Jar and Majroor, you are searching for something else. What is that something that makes the sentence complete? So you will no longer search for that something, and that something in, in Arabic grammar, in this case, is called muta'allaq. For those of you who may not be able to read Arabic, I'm writing the transliteration, muta'allaq. So jar and majur requires something with which you connect it, and that something is called muta'allaq. So we are searching for the muta'allaq of Bismillah ar so it makes sense to understand the whole complete sentence properly, what is actually intended. But there are some of us who say it's a kalam, it's a complete sentence, they will not search for that something, they don't need a muta'allaq because they don't believe it's a jar and majroo. If they believe it's jar and majroo, they will end up saying it's a word, it's incomplete. But they say it's a sentence. When it's a sentence, then you don't need a muta'allaq and you don't need to search about a muta'allaq. So this is one category of mufassirin who believe it's a complete sentence and they, uh, they say in their statement that uh, the Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim written in front of the Surah Al-Haqqa And the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, which is written in the Surah Al-Qari'ah, are clear examples for that, in their opinion. That's their call, their statement. In Tafsir, you have multiple call and statements of different Mufassirin. And uh, uh, these are exactly a sentence or what these two surahs? Yeah, they said the Bismillah in these two surahs are sentence, okay. not a word. So this is their statement, but uh, my teacher and our mainstream Mufassirin of our faith don't agree with this statement and don't buy it. It has no uh, <coughs> hadith of Prophet or Ahlul Bayt supporting this call and this statement. And there is no logical value to their statement either. <coughs> so this is, but this is just one statement I wanted to mention. So I wanted to bring it up so you know. But Abu Rahman Rahim is not the sifat for Allah. No, we are not talking about Rahman Rahim yet. We already discussed Rahman Rahim in the previous class. We are just talking about Ba and Ism right now, Ja and Majru right now. Oh, okay. We are not talking about Rahman Rahim. We did discuss Rahman Rahim already in the previous class. Uh, the Rahman Rahim are sifat of the word Allah. According to one um, one interpretation of the grammar. So they are this is one call. Now let's go to the second call. Shall I erase it? Does anyone want to take a picture? Oh, yeah. So the second call about that, the 
second second statement among the Mufassirin about that is that Bismillah serves like a, a rams. It means a code name. So they are some Mufassirin who call Bismillah as a code name. Code name of whom? Code name of Allah. It's one of the code names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their call, in their statement. Just like we have Huruf and Muqatta'ar The broken, le broken letters which I discussed in the Ramadan classes for those of you who were present uh, they talked about those 28-29 Aqwal and statements about Huruf and Muqatta'ar in total that we have in the history So which has its own discussion. So, uh, second statement of Tafsir says that Bismillah is a rams and code name of Allah, similar to Huruf and Muqatta'at. Just like for Huruf and Muqatta'at, you don't search for anything else because it's a code name, it's a name of Allah, uh, a hidden name or certain other things which Allah has kept hidden from us, name of certain other things. It's a name. So, when it's a name, uh, you don't need to search for a muta'allaq, a hidden something with which you want to connect Bismillah rahman rahim It will not make sense to search for any muta'allaq in that case. That's the second statement. This is also unacceptable because there is, uh, again, no hadith from the Prophet. The criteria, the prime criteria for doing tafsir of Quran is not just, you know, deciding with our aql. We use the aql to understand things, yes. But we don't decide with our aql. There's a fine line between using the aql. Allah gave the aql to use it, the intellect to use it positively and to come to the logical results of the brainstorming. But we don't, uh, you know, give our verdict about Qur'an unless what our upper intellect dictates is supported by a hadith of the Prophet or Ahlul Bayt. Unless our uh, intellectual result is supported by the hadith, my intellectual decision carries no weight. It's just what I thought. Maybe right and maybe wrong. So, Qur'an is only known Hello, do we have enough hadith to cover the whole Kalamullah? We have enough hadith to uh, cover. Um, almost every, almost every discussion about Quran. Yeah. <clears throat> or there are some principles also learned from the Hadith, and those principles help you apply in several places. So at the end of the day, yes, the answer to your question is yes. So. In the Maya'at al-Qur'an, al means Qur'an is only and only known by, recognized by those who are addressed. That means Allah addressed whom when he revealed the Qur'an? Addressed the Prophet. So the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt who are the real inheritors and Qur'an was given to the Prophet. He is the one who knows it properly. So at the end of the day we have returned to the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt are telling the hadith from their grandfather, from their from the Rasulullah, right? They, you look at the hadith pattern, they always, you know, you find it. I heard from my father, he told me, he was telling from his father, and so and so from Amir Mumreen, Amir Mumreen from Rasulullah. So it always reaches Rasulullah. So this is the ilm uh, that they have received uh, through the Holy Prophet. 
So the point is that the knowledge of Quran actually is with Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt salam. So our intellectual decision will not carry any weight about Allah's words unless it is supported by the Hadith. This second statement of Tafsir, yeah, Bismillah, is not Jaab and Majroor, but instead it's a rums and code name of Allah or certain things that Allah has kept, and kept hidden from us, just like the Huruf al the broken letters. This statement is also not acceptable because there is no Hadith to support this statement at all. So this is the second statement. Now let's go to the third one, which is the most famous and the accepted one among our scholars, which is the third statement is that Ba is Jara, that's the Harf al and rest of Ismillah, Ismillah Rahman Rahim is is Majru. So when this is confirmed that ba, letter Ba is giving the Jar and it's Harfun Jarra is the letter that gives the Kasra at the end of the next word or the Tanmeen of Kasra at the end of the next word depending and so Ba is that letter and the rest of what is given the state of Kasra or the Tanmeen of Kasra is called Majru. So Ba and the rest of the statements is, is called Majru. Ismillah Rahman Rahim is Majru. So this Ba and Jara and Majroor all together need a Muta'allaq to make sense, to make complete sense. It requires something, some, something with which you connect the sentence. And that something with which you connect the sentence, for the sentence to make sense, that something is called Muta'allaq. So now we are going to search about the muta'allaq. <coughs> the muta'allaq uh, um, 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 is uh, uh, in Islam we are required to start everything of our life with the name of Allah. So. The hadith of the Prophet says, Kullu Amrin Dibali Lam Yudda Every thing of some importance, if it is not started with the name of Allah, it will be incomplete. So we are told that everything will be incomplete. Abtar in Arabic means something which is, you know, maktul uh, akhir, means dum uh, burida. You know, you just, if you imagine an animal without a tail, it's, it's incomplete at the end. So, literally, this is what it means. So, anything which is important, if you don't start in the name of Allah, it will remain incomplete. So, everything should be started with the name of Allah. And... Uh, <coughs> and... Uh, if we start the things with the name of Allah, it will become complete. It will not become incomplete from the beginning. And uh, because Allah has said in the Holy Quran, Huwal Awwal, that's the dream. Huwal Awwal. And Allah is the beginner, the beginning one, then everything should start with Him. There is no one ahead of Him. 
So, and everything should also end with Allah's remembrance. Because Allah also said in the Holy Quran, Huwal Akhir. Because Allah is the beginning one and He is the one that, at the end. So that's what we call Sarmat, right? Sarmat <coughs> means someone who was there since ever and forever. You combine both of these things and it becomes Sarmat. So Allah is a Sarmat since ever and forever. So Allah is awwal and Allah is the akhir. When he's the beginning and he's the end, so the beginning should be with his name as well. If we want our uh, action to be complete from the beginning, and it should, we should end it with the remembrance and name of Allah as well, so that our end is also not incomplete, but complete. So if we don't mention the name of Allah, whether in the beginning or we don't remember Allah at the end, our action has no preference in the eyes of Allah, no rujhan. No rujhan means no preference. And Allah uh, because Allah is not pleased with any action, it is just not done with his, with his name. And any action which has no rujhan and no preference, and Allah is not pleased with, we definitely remain incomplete. Yeah, it's narrated in Bibismillah as well. Because I'm in the Ibad and let me put that Bibismillah and Bismillah Yeah, it may, yeah, you can add Bismillah. I have read it in both ways. Bismillah. This, this discussion is what we are about to come right now, because, yeah, because if you say Bismillah, what it means, you have necessarily, if you say Bismillah, it means you have to necessarily say Bismillah. Or Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim But it's not required for us necessarily when we are talking about starting other things with the name of Allah. We are not required necessarily to say Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim only. We can say other zikr of Allah as well, which I am coming to that point. That's the next point that I want to come to. So, so any action which is not, you know, it has no preference, no rajhan, Allah is not pleased with that, and it's Allah is not pleased, it's not going to be complete. So when, yeah, so now coming to this point, when we say we need to start everything in the name of Allah, that does not necessarily mean that we have to say Bismillah or Bismillah Rahman Rahim necessarily. What we mean that we have to remember Allah. You can remember Allah in various ways, various types of zikr and phrases of remembrance. So you are allowed to say uh, Alhamdulillah. In the beginning of your conversation, you are remembering Allah. You are allowed to say Subhanallah in the beginning of your conversation. And that's also okay because you are remembering Allah. Or, for example, Allah Akbar. say that as well, you're remembering Allah, you know, um, or you can say that, ilaha illallah, for example, you're also remembering Allah, so there are various ways, various zikr of Allah, which you can say, the bottom line, you're mentioning and remembering Allah, and that's what counts, it's not necessarily required from us to always say the exact word, Bismillah, or Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in our everyday actions, the yeah, I'm not talking about Salat and prayers, we have to say how it is revealed in the Holy Quran. I'm talking about all the rest of the actions other than Salat. So we can say Tahmeed, Alhamdulillah, or Tasbih, Subhanallah, or Takbir, Allah Akbar, or Tahdeel, La ilaha illallah, or any other name 
among the names of Allah or any other sifat. You can say Al Muhaymin, you can say Al Jabbar, you can say you know Al Hakim, you can say Al Wali, any other name of Allah or any other <coughs> attribute of Allah. This is also remembering Allah, and that's enough. Just like the bukum of slaughtering an animal. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, فَكُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكِرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ So Allah has commanded us to eat from those uh, that animal upon which the name of Allah has been mentioned. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يُذْكَرِ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ Another verse of Holy Quran says, and do not eat from what the name of Allah uh, was not mentioned upon it. So if you are slaughtering an animal and you did not mention the name of Allah, it's haram to eat from that, from the meat of that animal. Even though it's a halal meat animal, it will be classified in the hukum of al-mayta, means a dead animal, murdar. Dead animal means some animal dies a natural death or any other death which is not Islamically, Islam process of slaughtering. So that is like a dead animal and, and dead, eating the dead animal's meat is haram even though it is a halal meat animal in itself it's haram to eat because the name of Allah was not mentioned. So Quran is stopping us from eating from any, um, you know, uh, any, when we slaughter the animal and we did not mention the name of Allah, it's not allowed to eat from the flesh of that animal. So this uh, ruling of the fiqh, which is taken from the Quran, that you have to mention Allah, again, it does not require you to necessarily say Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim in the beginning of slaughtering. What it requires is to remember Allah. So you can say, SubhanAllah, and you can slaughter the sheep. That's okay. You can say, Allahu Akbar, and you can slaughter the sheep. You can say La ilaha illallah and you can slaughter the Alhamdulillah and you can slaughter the sheep. It's all halal because it's all the name of Allah. It's not necessarily required to say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. One person came to <coughs> Imam alayhi salam and said, can I erase this? <coughs> One person came to Imam salam and said that <coughs> that uh, uh, if someone uh, recites tasbih or takbir or tahli or tahmid at the time of slaughtering the animal, uh, yeah, let me write down this hadith. Uh, it's good for you, the reference. A person came to Imam Sadiq and asked that, that if a man 
came and slaughtered an animal and he did tasbih, subhanallah, or he did takbir, Allahu Akbar, or he did he said, la ilaha illallah, or he did the hamd of Allah. So is that sufficient? Is it okay to eat that animal? That means he did not say Bismillah Rahman Rahim. And Imam alayhi salam said, this is the hadith, all these are from the names of Allah. So this is an authentic narration. The Imam al Islam said that all these are names of Allah, from among the names of Allah. There is no problem with it. So basically, you, and when you are slaughtering an animal, you just say Subhanallah, Allah, Akbar, La ilaha illallah, or any other name of Allah. This is enough. You don't have to necessarily say Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Oh, what's the ayah Quran said? What is that? The ayah Quran said. The Quran says, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يُذْكَرِ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ And do not eat from what name of Allah was not mentioned upon it. It didn't say it has to be Bismillah. It didn't say it has to be Bismillah. It said name of Allah. <coughs> so, some of the times, so we, 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 we do the things with the mention of the name of Allah. We remember Allah at the beginning and we remember Allah at the end. So, uh, uh, some of the times when you are uh, taking the name of Allah with Jar and Majroor, it is, you are mentioning that Allah and it's clear. For example, when we say in the prayers, Right, so with the power of Allah and His strength, I stand up and I sit down. This sentence we say when we are rising up from sitting position towards the Qiyam and standing. Mm -hmm. So here, Jar and Majroor is here, Bihawlillah, with the power of Allah. This Ba is the Jar, and Hawlillah wa Quwwatihi is the Majroor. So here, the Muta'allaq is mentioned right here. So there is no room for anybody to come and, you know, start a discussion about what is the hidden muta'allaq, where are you supposed to connect the ba, the jarra, and the majroor with wa, what is that something with which you have to connect to make the complete, make it, make it sense, make, make it make sense and make a complete sentence. Here it is already completed because the muta'allaq is mentioned right there. So in these kinds of examples, there, there is no discussion that happens. Or another example from Quran, this is not from Quran, but one example from Quran where Allah says, Ikra. <laughs> Here also, Bismi Rabbika Ladi Khalaq. This is also Jar and Majroor. Right? But this Iqra mentioned in the beginning is the Muta'allaq. So there is no room for discussion among the Mufassireen 
this jar and the is connected to what? It's already there in the Quran. <coughs> so ikrah is the is the verb in the tense of command, and that verb is the muta'allaq with which the rest of the sentence is connected. So in some of the case, or if a person is standing up in his everyday life, he says Bismillah Rahman Rahim. It's obvious because his uh, you know style and way of saying it and the time where he's saying it these are all indicators that what the guy intends is he's standing up <coughs> with the with the you know in the name of Allah so in some of the cases when we use it our muta'allaq that hidden word becomes obvious because we have so many indicators that point towards what we are intending to do or if a person is slaughtering an animal and he says Bismillah Rahman Rahim, it's again obvious. Muta'allaq becomes obvious that he's slaughtering the animal. So you can hide that verb or the noun in Arabic language or in your own language, you know, what you are intending. You are hiding that verb in Arabic or noun which is related to slaughtering. For example, Azbah. So, in some of the cases when we use it, the muta'allaq is obvious because we have indicators that point towards that. But about Bismillah Rahman Rahim, um, um, there is a very big discussion among the mufassirin. What exactly is the muta'allaq? Well, uh, we have uh, Ba is, is usually commonly uh, uh, used for isti'anat. Isti'anat means seeking help. Or it is used for ibtida. Means starting something. So you are you can these are the common usages of the uh, of the letter ba in Arabic. So when we say Bismillah uh, Rahman Rahim, there's a big chance to apply it in the common usage of ba, which is seeking help. So you are trying to say astainu. I seek help in the name of Allah who is Rahman Rahim. Or I am or ibtadatu. I'm starting in the name of Allah, Rahman Rahim. These are the common usages of the, of the letter Ba. So Isti'anat and Ibtida are commonly used usages of the letter Ba. And uh, this is one ihtimal and chance. Uh, another thing to... I'm sorry. Muta'allaq for the Bismillah Rahman Rahim, it cannot be the person actually... Repeating it, saying it, uh, what do you mean? could be, I mean, saying Muta'allaq could be for Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. When I say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, I could be Muta'allaq for no, that sentence. No, it has to be necessarily, Muta'allaq has to be either a verb or a noun. That's it. According to the rules of the grammar. Muta'allaq has to be either a verb or a noun. So, if you are talking about the common one, this common usage is ta'ana, so the verb will be asta'inu, which is hidden. Hidden, we call it mustatir. The hidden verb would be asta'inu. If somebody intends asta'ana, I'm seeking help. Of Allah, with the through the name of Allah, the Rahman, the Rahim, I am seeking the help. So, astainu is a word. Or, isti'anati. If you want to use it in a noun, then you will say it like this. Isti'anati. My seeking of the help is through the name of Allah, the Rahman, the Rahim. So, you are now using a noun which is hidden before this Allah, Rahman, Rahim. So you can either, you have to have a verb or a noun necessarily for 
Dajjal and Madhur to be connected to a Muta'allaq, the Muta'allaq must be a verb or a noun. Okay, the first lot me, uh, just niyat is not okay, we have to say it. We have to say it. And not just that, but you have to say it with the intention of that specific animal. Specific. If you just say, in a general sense, you remember, you were thinking about Allah, and say, Alhamdulillah, for all the blessings He gave me, and then all of a sudden you slaughter. This is haram to eat. It's not allowed, because you have to say the name of Allah with the niyat of slaughtering that animal. So even if you don't want to say Bismillah Rahman, you want to say Alhamdulillah, fine. But say Alhamdulillah in the need of slaughtering that specific animal. So whatever the zikr is basically for that animal. For that animal. <coughs> so oh, so that that is statement also for for when you want to do something, when you want to start something, when you want to eat something, you want to actually Anything. do any action. Yes. Say Alhamdulillah and start doing it. Oh, yeah, yeah you, you, did, you mentioned Allah, that's enough. That's enough. Although we have so many hadiths doing emphasis on saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, so if you choose this specific zikr and you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, it has a special fadilat and uh, highness of this zikr. But you are okay. You are within the limits of okay. Your action will not be after. It will not be incomplete. Because you did remember Allah. That's the bottom line. So you can say astaino or istaanasi, or if you want to use the, another common word, iktada, start, then you can say uh, I start or if did I eat? This will have a him, so you can hide this word, this verb in the beginning. You can make it mustafet, hidden. Or you can hide the noun. So I start through the name of Allah, Rahman Rahim. Or ibtidai, my start is through the name of Allah, the Rahman and the Rahim. So this is how the sentence becomes complete through the muta'allaq, which is hidden. Now there is another uh, question that uh, uh, is raised that you know, when we are starting in the name of Allah, then why um, didn't Allah say Billah Rahman Rahim? Why didn't He say Why is the word ism added here? It was there a need? I'm starting with Allah, the Rahman, the Rahim. There is also a discussion about this. Then why is the word ism added? We can seek istihanat and help, or we can start our things with Allah. That was wasn't that sufficient. So, there are so many answers given by scholars about that. Mm. So, by putting Bay with the Allah Rahman Rahim, that it comes to be a complete sentence? It still is not complete. Right? Then it's not a complete sentence. You do require Muta'allaq for this as well. That's okay. So, that means 
Okay. Yeah, but the, the best Bismillah or Bay is still the same. It's yeah, it's right. all the same. But they are they are raising the question to uh, for this yeah, point is why the word ism was added. Is it necessary? You can you avoid the word ism? So so this is the question raised. Now several answers are given by <coughs> different scholars. Some of the scholars say, can I erase this? Yeah, the first answer that is given by some scholars is that we say ism for the sake of the Baruch. Name, the word name is ancient, mentioned, which is, uh, which indicates the words seeking the Baruch, seeking the Barakat and blessing. This is the reason some of the scholars have given. The second reason some scholars have given about why the word ism is added, Ekhtimalan, is to distinguish Swearing, Hassan, and seeking. So when you say, if you have said Billahi, there was a big probability that we are swearing in the name of Allah. Because when you swear in Arabic, there are three ways officially to swear on. Swearing is done through three ways. First is by the letter Ba, so you say Billahi. This is the official way of swearing. Or through the letter Ta, so you say Tallahi. Or through the letter Wow, so you say Wallahi. These are only three Islamically accepted, Sharia accepted ways of swearing in Islam. You know, binding way of swearing that binds you to and obliges you to follow what you are saying. If you uh, swear by other ways, it's, it's not binding on you. You can do it, it's not binding. So what is the Shari uh, way of swearing and if you go to an Islamic court system and the Qadi requires you to do the swearing, this is how we do it. And there's no way of people say, no, I'll put my hand on Quran, I'll put the Quran on my head and I can say that. This is, has no legal value. There's no shari'i value. These are all cultural things. What has the shari'i value is swearing by the name of Allah. Um, so, and there's a process. So we do it either by saying Billahi or Tallahi or Wallahi. These are only three ways the Sharia accepts. So, here we learn, you can say Wallahi or Tallahi or Billahi. So, Ba is also one of the ways of Islamic process of swearing. 
So if Allah, ha- if it was said Billah Rahman Rahim, it could have caused uh, confusion or a chance that Allah is swearing His own name. Not what we are discussing here. We are starting or seeking help from Allah, the Rahman, the Rahim. It would be a swear, not what we are discussing. And this is the second reason, Ihtimal and scholars say. And that's the second reason why the word ism is added. So that's how it distinguishes between, and it, it, make, it clarifies that it is not a swearing. Because it says Bismillah, if it was swearing, it would have said Billah. So, so all those swearing that we do is all bottom. Huh? All, all, all this swearing we do is not acceptable in the Islamic world. You can do it. That's your own culture. And Islam does not <laughs> validate it. What yeah. Islam validates is the Sharia validates is these three ways of swearing. You go to the Islamic Qadi, he ask you to do it in one of these three ways according to certain you know processes that are involved. And he, you know, he will ask you to do it like this. There is no other way. So and the third call and statement about why the word ism is added and why not Allah say Billah Rahman Rahim. Third statement of some scholars is that that there is no difference. There is no difference. They say some scholars say there is no difference between Billah Rahman Rahim and Bismillah Rahman Rahim. There is no difference between those two. That's their statement. You know, like I said, in tafsir you always find multiple statements. Everyone is trying to furnish his own argument with his own ways of uh, proving it. So they say the reason why there is no difference is that ism is ayinul musamma. That means, Ism means the name, Musamma means the named. The named person or thing. Ism is, the name is actually the named person and thing. So it's not a different thing. The name is actually something that refers to the same thing, same person. There is no difference between the name and the, and the thing. Remember when I, in the, in the first lesson of Tafsi, I gave multiple aqwal and statements of scholars about the meaning of the word ism. For those of you who are present, I told uh, there are three different statements about the meaning of the word ism itself. And this is where I said that the uh, Orfa say that ism is actually um, is Ibaratan and Wafi. It's uh, ism, the name actually depicts the reality out there. So Actually, in their perspective, name is that reality. So, now you are assigning a word for that reality. So, what's the process involved? When you assign a word for a reality, you first think about that thing in your mind. This is the process involved. You think about that reality, you visualize that reality in your mind, and uh, this image that comes in your mind is also depicting the same reality. So in a sense, you can also call this, there's an ism. There's an, uh, there's a alamat and sign coming in your mind for that reality. You thought about that in your mind. So what picture came is also the ism of that reality. And then for that mafhum and uh, imagination, you coin a word for it in the language. 
So the word is a depiction of the imagination and the imagination is the depiction of the reality out there. So actually the name is nothing but the reality. So this is how the word of Paul said, that's the best description of the name of the word is not the first two which I mentioned earlier in the first class. This is the best description of what Paul said is the right way of putting it. So this third statement says that there is no difference between Bismillah Rahim and Bismillah Rahim because Ism and Musamma are not two different things. Name and the named thing are not two different things. It is one and the same thing. This is how they put it. So let's go to the fourth description about that. Why didn't, uh, why wasn't this one, this is the Rahman Rahim said, instead of Bismillah Rahman Rahim. The fourth description is that um, the reason, some scholars said the reason the word ism is added. So this word ism, what is done, what it does is that it it provides fullness, familiarity with Allah. When the, you mention, bring up the name, the word isn't named before Allah, you are paving the way for your minds and souls to get familiar and manus with the name of Allah. And this, uh, uh, you know, uh, causes uh, um, the soul to, to be clean. From all attachments. Bringing the word name first paves the way to make your mind manus and familiar with Allah, and it causes, or supposed to cause, cleaning of the soul. So the word Allah. later arrives, so the word Allah arrives in a clean soul. You bring the word Allah later and that word Allah comes and arrives in a clean soul. Naqawatul qalb and safaul qalb purification and purity of the heart is established through that. You first make it manus as a first step and then when you bring the name of Allah, you are supposed to detach yourself from everything else other than Him and then you mention Allah. So now it is supposed to be only Allah in your soul. This is how uh, the fourth statement says.